Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to make a really, really nice Romelu Lukaku artwork. I saw that a lot of you guys like my live stream I did last weekend. And so I thought maybe it's just a good idea to take you guys through all of my work process from beginning till the end result. So you guys can learn and follow the steps as I do them. So this video will be a lot longer, but if you if you complete all the steps I do, you will get the exact same result. Because I will tell you guys what you have to do with every single step. So I hope you guys like this content. And if you guys like that I make these longer videos so you get all the steps in depth. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Because there, there will be a lot of, of, of videos coming in the coming weeks. So let's go to the first step. So this is the source photo that I'm going to use. I really love this picture because it gives a really nice uh, in-depth look. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a new document in Photoshop. These are the pixel ratio that I always use for all of my artwork. So if you just copy these ones, you will just have the resolution that I have. So let's name it Lokaku. So first, of all, so first of all, because we have this picture, we need to make a cutout out of it. Um, so the way that I do that all the time uh, for like these smaller videos, I simply put them into Photoshop so you get this result. And right now let's go into the selection menu and let's go ahead and select subject. This gives you a main basic kind of selection which we have to refine to get a real nice result but it is decent enough to start from it you know it really saves you a lot of time and it saves you a lot of working and it saves you a lot of working space all right so what you have to do right now is click on this icon which makes a layer mask this is a non-destructive way of working so right now what we're going to do is just we're going to get a new solid color behind him it doesn't really matter what color it is just so you see the difference between him and the background so we're just going to check if there are any real problems you see right here there are a couple of few problems so what you have to do right now is simply take your brush tool the size doesn't really matter in the beginning but you have to adjust this later on and let's right now paint some of it back with white, if you paint with black, you paint it away. So let's see if we can spot some real big problems. This is something that I don't really like. So let's just adjust that. Uh, at his mouth, of course, here is a big problem. So let's simply just paint that back. So at his nose, I see a little bit of weirdness going on. So let's simply paint that away so you might get the hang of it if you do it a lot of times because I've been doing Photoshop for like half a year so I know all the steps that I have to do but let's just go ahead and check around his edge right here is something that I don't really like of course if you do if you make an artwork out of it it doesn't really matter that much but I have a real consistent eye for details so what we're going to do which makes the edge a little bit better so let's just take a close look around the edge let's go into filter other and minimum and this makes the edge one pixel smaller so you get a little bit of more refined edge around your subject so let's right now convert this into a smart object and let's transport this to our other document Alright, so right now we can really start with making the artwork. So let's scale it down a little bit because it's a little bit too big. So let's position it the way that I want it to appear. So this looks about right. So what are we going to do right now? Let's put a little camera raw filter on it first. Because this gives a little bit of contrast and a little bit of, yeah, just a nice texture to everything. Always boost the clarity a little bit. Because that is just a really nice effect. Let's boost the highlights and let's reduce the shadows a little bit. Let's right now go into curve and give 
everything a little bit more contrast. So you see right now it has a little bit too much yellow, so the way to reduce that is just to reduce the vibrance a little bit. Just minus 5, that's just fine. And you see the difference before and after. That it's, it's, it's just something, but it really helps to boost your artwork in the end. So right now let's make a nice background. What I'm going to do, uh, what I have in mind, because his shoulders or the lines from Inter have like these yeah, nice effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and recreate that. The way that I'm going to do that is by simply making a new rectangle. So let's try something maybe 75 pixel, pixels height and 250 pixels of width yeah that looks nice let's right now click our right mouse click and choose skew and let's right now reduce the edge to minus 20 that looks fine all right let's right now duplicate our rectangle layer by holding command J so right now you have two layers what you have to do right now is flip horizontal and right now you have these two opposite layers so what we're going to do right now is we're going to put this one a little bit up front we want them to line up perfectly straight is this fine yeah this looks fine so let's right now select both of our rectangles press command J again and let's simply do the same but underneath them. Let's make sure they line up perfectly straight. And let's do that step again. You might have to do this a couple of times because I kind of want all of the backgrounds to have this effect. At the end it will give a really really nice feeling. But of course it takes some while. Of course, the more rectangles you have, the faster you can make more. So right now we're almost done with the first layer, but of course we need some more beside each other. So right now let's do it one more time and put it all the way at the top. This is not perfect, so let's make that a little bit better. All right, this already looks kind of nice, I'm not going to lie. It gives a real contrast look, but I'm thinking of putting on a gradient map later, so we can always adjust this, of course. So let's right now group all of them. Let's call it line one. Let's right now duplicate this line. Let's call it line two. And let's right now transform them and just put them beside each other. You see? Let's right now make another one. Let's call this one line 3. And let's put this one just all the way over here. So what we can do right now is just play around with them. What looks best? I kind of like this. I kind of like this. So what we're going to do right now is just turn this into a smart object. So we can always adjust it later. And what we're going to do right now is, of course, put it behind of our subject. And let's right now, what I'm thinking of is putting on a gradient map on him. Not in green, of course. I want the blue of his shirt. The darkest blue of his shirt. What is the darkest blue? Maybe around here. Yeah, that looks fine. Let's select our gradient map. And let's select green and turn it into blue already looks a lot better not perfect but a lot better right now I want some of the more brighter blue areas something of course make sure you always select your subject layer otherwise you will select nothing or the wrong layer of course now I want something more bright alright let's see what this does let's click on this and let's right now Let's play a little bit with it. 
not really a big fan of it. Maybe something like this is better. I like this. I really do like this. Let's see before and after. Yeah, I like it. I really, really like it. So let's right now make a, let's right now clip it to the subject layer and we're just going to duplicate it with command, with holding the alt button and clip it to the layer down that. Um, let's right now turn the visibility of everything off and we're going to make something new. We're going to make our own brush because I saw that a lot of you guys asked me how do I make all of my brushes and how do I make, how do I make the randomness appear. So I'm just going to show you guys right now. So what we're going to do is just draw a new rectangle. Let's choose something around, yeah, around 1000 pixels of width and 30 pixels of height. This is of course nothing, but let's right now click on this layer with holding the command button. So you select the outlines of the rectangle. Let's right now into the fine, let's right now go into the fine brush preset. And right now we're just simply going to make a new brush. So right now we're, we want to make some, yeah, some randomness appear. So the way to do that, or the way I do it most of the time, is by controlling my brush settings. Let's put the spacing to 50%. Let's adjust the size jitter. And that's about right. So right now if I paint one and hold my shift button and right now go to the to the bottom you get this random result of course I don't want it in blue I want it in black so let's just reduce my size a little bit let's go for around 800 pixels so let's do it one more time and I already really like this Let's go to 600 pixels. Of course, the result will never be exactly what I do because it's a lot of randomness, of course. But you will kind of get the same result. So right now we're going to paint with black and what you will see, we're going to paint it away. So right now let's put it to 400 pixels. And let's right now paint some of them back. All right, I kind of like this already. So let's right now do everything again, maybe select a little bit of grayish because we are going to put a gradient map on this as well so we get a little bit of depth in our artwork. So let's do this, of course these are all the same techniques as I did earlier, simply painting with the, with, with the brush we just created and very easy. Just painting away and painting some of it back with our layer mask. This is very, very easy. It's not really rocket science, but of course you need to know the technique. Let's paint some of these back. Let's create some randomness in them. Alright, All right, and let's right now group these two layers, let's call it randomness, of course the name doesn't really, doesn't really matter, but I like to keep my things consistent, and let's right now put the gradient map we just created on top of this one as well. Alright, let's put everything back. And you, you, now we can see what is going on. I don't really like the brightness of like the gray areas. So let's simply just adjust that with something like this. I like this one already, but I really, you know what I really, really like? I like, uh, one of the reasons that I like the picture was that there was smoke coming from 
out of his mouth and I really want to recreate that as well so how are we going to do that you ask we're just going to create a new layer and we're going to select just a random smoke brush it doesn't really matter you find them all over all over Facebook oh, Facebook <laughs> all over Google of course just search some smoke brush or search the name of this powder Photoshop brush and you will find something similar similar as I have right now so let's just paint it and let's just flip it around you see and let's right now put it behind of our subject let's paint some more let's just reduce the opacity to around 40 let's make a new layer maybe add a little more and let's reduce the opacity to this one to 60 you get a little bit of in-depth look and I already really really like this artwork so what are we going to do right now let's go into our internet browser and let's search for some textures so what I'm going to search first is some old paper white this sounds really really weird but let's go into pictures and just search something that we like I kinda like this one kinda like this one as well and I really like this one so what we're going to do is simply copy this image let's go to our artwork in Photoshop again let's put it on top let's make it a little bit bigger alright I see there are a few like copyright symbols so we're just going to remove them of course that's not really the way that you have to do it but it's the way I do it <laughs> so the way to do that is just with the clone stamp tool what you want to do right now is simply make sure all layers are select is selected let's put an area where there isn't a stamp and let's simply paint it away so you see it's really really easy make sure to press the alt button when you select an area and release it and you can simply paint over the areas that have a masked button just do it for all of the icons so we can make a very very nice texture alright this already looks almost finished so let's see if we can spot some more copyright symbols alright I don't so let's right now go into let's right now make it turn it into a smart object of course and let's right now choose the blend mode multiply I think will work best yeah, it definitely does. All right. So what are we going to do right now? Let's search some crunch texture. All right, and let's right now see which one would work best. I kind of like this texture. It's a little bit too much. I really like this one. So let's just copy this one. And let's go into our artwork again. Go to the top of the artwork. And let's right now paint it in it's a little bit too big so let's reduce the scale let's turn it 90 degrees and let's make it as big as our artwork all right let's right now turn it around with holding command i and let's right now choose the blend mode screen yeah screen will work best it's a little bit too much right now, so we're just going to reduce the intensity of everything. Let's do that with bringing up the levels, levels panel with holding Command or Control L. And let's right now play around with this slide. If you put it on this side, it will make everything a lot bit brighter. If you put it right here, it will make everything a little bit more subtle. And that's what we want, of course. Let's right now view the before and after. All right, I really already like this artwork. What we're going to do right now is I kind of want to make some more adjustments on our subject. 
So what we're going to do is make everything. Let's re let's just turn the visibility of our textures off. Let's right now make a new solid white color fill. Now let's right now go into our layer style. The way to do that is simply double click on the color on the color fill. And let's right now play around with this slide. All right. So right now it gives the edge really really hard. It gives a really really hard edge and the way to make that a little bit more subtle is just clicking on this slide holding our alt button and the two of the slides go apart so right now if you control these slides it will make everything a, a lot more subtle so let's view the before and after you see the highlights are a lot better right now I kind of also want that the background isn't that bright. So how am I going to do that? I'm just going to go ahead to the gradient we made earlier, not of the randomness of course, but to the whole of the background. I don't know if this will affect the background. No, it doesn't. So what we have to do right now is create a new solid color and let's make it a little bit more gray. All right. Let's right now do everything again for this for the shadows. Let's make a new solid black color. Let's clip it to the layer down below. You can also do that with holding uh, with making create clipping mask. That will also clip it down below. And let's right now, of course, take the white slide and do the exact same thing. Let's press the old button and let's reduce everything. So this gives a lot more contrast to everything. I think this is a little bit too bright, so let's select 60%, but it really does a lot. Let's see before and after. It actually really really does a lot so let's right now select this color again of his shirt be sure to select the black layer let's go into our green map again and let's right now change this color to the color we just selected all right this is not correct let's simply try that again let's go to our black layer select some color of his shirt let's Click Command C to, co to copy the color code. Let's go into the gradient map and let's change this color to the color we just selected. Let's right now do the same for the randomness. And you see it all blends a lot better together. All right, I kind of like this already. Uh, let's just turn back on our textures. All right, so we're going to add another texture. We're going to add a grunge photo frame. And let's right now choose which one I think will work best. I really like this one. Let's open the image in a different browser. This is really small, so <laughs> this won't work. Sad enough, because I really liked it. Let's see, I like this subt subtle one. So let's open this one in the new browser, see if this is big. All right, it saves it automatically. So let's add this to our artwork. It's behind of everything, so we have to put it in at front, of course. So let's right now make it a lot bigger. Of course, only then we will see if it will actually work. Let's turn it 90 degrees and let's make it as big as our artwork. All right, so we're just going to do the same steps as we did earlier. We're going to turn around the colors with holding Command I. And let's right now go into our blend modes and choose what will work best. I kind of like the color dodge one. 
let's see what it does at the edge difference between color dodge and screen let's see the before and after let's make it a little bit more subtle all right so let's see the before and after what do you guys think I think we have to go for something around 85 before and after all right so I really really like this I really really do all right so what are we going to do right now let's apply a very nice camera raw filter a lot of you guys asked me how do I make a nice camera raw filter but I'm just going to take you every take you through every single step right now but I think we have to put some glow on him because right now it's not really glowy or it's not really blend that well with the background so we're just going to make a new solid color let's select linear dodge add let's turn around our layer mask with holding command or control i and let's right now just select one of our standard brushes which are in photoshop let's make it a little bit smaller let's put the flow on something like two percent it's already way too bright let's put it at one percent and let's just go around his edge to make it just blend with the background all right let's do it with his arm as well let's do it with his back of course this has to be a little bit more subtle because the light is coming from in, coming from the front of him let's see the difference before and after it does something it helps to sell the whole of the artwork all right what are we going to do right now we're just going to select every single layer we're just selecting them, them of course let's right now turn them into a smart object this can take a while if your PC is a little bit struggling right now we're going to duplicate it and let's right now go into the camera raw filter all right you will get something like this so this is not really what we want but for now it doesn't really matter so what are we going to do we're just going to play ahead with every single slide to see what works best let's boost the clarity a little bit just a little bit or of course as far as you might like if you like this it's a little bit over the top for me but if you like it go ahead just go for it it's your own opinion man so uh, it doesn't really matter what I think but I'm just going to boost it a little bit I'm going to boost the exposure a little bit I'm going to boost the highlights yeah just 20 let's reduce the shadows a little bit minus 30 let's add a little bit of texture just a little bit let's reduce the vibrance oh in black and white it's it also it it really looks really really nice I'm just going to reduce it a little bit so minus 15 let's see what saturation does oh if you put saturation at 100 it really boosts everything so let's put it in plus 75 all right let's go into curves let's drag this one up a little bit so you get this kind of graded texture so let's right now add a little bit of sharpening let's go into the color mixer of course you only of course normally you would have to go over every slide but right now we only have blues so we can simply only do use that one I kind um let's i don't want it pink of course and i don't want it green so i just want it a little bit more to the green side minus five i don't think anything else would be appreciated let's put the purples on plus 10 and let's see the before and after it doesn't really do that much but okay let's right now go into color grading let's select every single slide on its own let's right now choose the chat shadows what looks best oh i like the orange one let's put saturation on like 13. 
Yeah. Let's go into Midtones. And let's see what works best for that. Oh, I really, really like the yellow one. So let's put it at 20. And let's right now go into Highlights. Let's see. I like the dark blue one and let's put that on 20 as well so let's see before and after all right let's right now go into the balance filter do we want it a little bit more yellow or a little bit more blue let's make it a little bit more blue let's see the blending what that does let's blend everything well together at around 80 right now going to optics let's reduce the vignette a lot because we have a really tall ca canvas you see if you boost the vignette it will make everything brighter if you reduce it it will make everything darker most of the time I really like everything to be darker <laughs> let's go into the effects and let's add a little bit of grain to everything to make everything blend even better and let's reduce the vignette even more. Let's see what works best. Dark or really bright. I just want to see what it does. So let's click OK. It's a little bit too bright, so I think I'm going for I'm I'm still going to go for making it darker. Minus 60, that will work. Let's go into our calibration. Let's choose plus 75 or 65. 60 will work. The green primary. Minus 40. And the blue primary, of course. Let's choose minus 5. And let's right now click on OK. And this is your artwork. Right now we're going to see what has happened with our camera filter. This was everything before, it's already pretty nice, but I think the camera raw filter really just boosted up that extra notch. I really really like it, let's take a little bit closer look in depth. So you get kind of everything that I do all the time, you get all the randomness, some nice textures, some nice grain on everything, yeah I really really like this artwork. So this was it guys, I hope you guys really liked this artwork, if you want to see more of these like extended tutorials, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below what you like about them, because I really like all the support that I get from you guys, and let's subscribe, because there are a lot of few, there are a lot of more videos coming in the coming weeks, so be sure to check your notifications, and be sure to stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys later.